Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we are going to be going over things to look for for your first five string bass. Let's do this. So you're looking to get your first five string bass, or just a new five string bass. What do you look for? Where do you start? That's what we're going to talk about today. Now the world of five string basses is very interesting. Unlike four string basses, where a lot of things are somewhat cookie cutter in terms of shapes and dimensions, the world of five strings is no man's land. Anything can be any size and anything goes. Generally speaking, four string instruments have 19 millimeter spacing at the bridge. You generally have between 20 and 24 frets. Your nut width is generally around 38 to 42 or 43 millimeters at the extremes, and you generally have four tuners in either a line or a two by two configuration, or a one by three if you're a stingray. Most 34 inch scale four string basses are very similar in many ways. But with five strings, there is a lot of big differences and they may impact you and your playing style significantly. And we're gonna talk about those today. Let's first talk about the, you know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. So the first place to start is your budget. How much you want to spend on your five string bass. You can find a five string for as little as, you know, a hundred or so dollars from like Tomon or Glary, or you can spend multiple thousands on a five string bass as well. And there are tons of basses in between those extremes. So where should you start? To find out how much you should really spend on a five string bass, you really should think about whether or not you need or just want a five string bass. Are you in situations where you need that low B string and that added range? Or is it just a nice to have or just a glorified thumb rest? That's all up to you and your needs. And that should help you at least kind of figure out where your budget should be along with, you know, how much money you have to spend in general on things. Now the first and one of the most important factors of any five string is the bridge and the bridge spacing. Unlike four string bases, which are generally around 19 millimeters, five string bases can vary a lot in terms of their bridge spacing. On one extreme, we have very tight spacing like on Schecter's, some Ibanez models, and even the lower end Stingrays from Sterling by Music Man, which have 16 and a half millimeter spacing. In my opinion, that is very tight, especially as a finger style player and a slapper. I prefer wider spacing. And on the other end of the extreme, we have this Lakeland here, which has 19 millimeter spacing at the bridge. That is the same spacing that you get on a four string, just with an added string. While examining the bridge and the spacing, you can also see whether or not the bass you're looking at has a string through body option or just string through the bridge. It's arguable whether or not string through body provides any benefits, however, I like doing it when I can. This particular Lakeland allows you to string through the bridge or the body, but with these flat wounds, it is currently strung through the bridge. Moving up the body, the next thing you want to look at is electronics. Do you want an active or a passive bass? Do you want a bass with one pickup or two? Are you going for a vintage tone or a more modern tone or something that can kind of do both? Now, when I say active, I can mean a variety of things, but I'm basically saying, do you want a bass that needs a battery or a completely passive instrument that does not require a battery? Do you want a preamp? Do you want to be able to control the various frequencies available to you? Or do you want passive controls, more simple volume and tone or a volume volume tone? For pickups, do you want active pickups like EMGs or passive pickups like Nordstrand or Seymour Duncan? Also when shopping around for a bass, look at the electronics and who makes them. Are they using in-house pickups or are they using brand name pickups like EMG, Bartolini, Nordstrand, Aguilar, etc. High-end aftermarket pickups being featured stock on a bass is a definite selling point in my eyes. Focusing on the body, we can also talk about body materials. Lower end bases usually use cheaper woods for the body like basswood, poplar, and in some extreme cases, even like plywood. 
Higher end bases generally use woods like alder, ash, mahogany, and such to use on their base bodies. However, those high end woods sometimes come at a cost of weight, and it's important to consider the weight of an instrument, as five string bases can be a little bit bigger than their four string counterparts and weigh a bit more. Next, moving up to the neck, these are things you should consider. Fret count, nut width, and scale. These are going to have the biggest impacts on your playing experience as well as the response of the bass, especially on the lower registers with the B string. Also look at how the neck is attached to the body. Is it neck through? Is the neck glued on via set neck or is it bolt on? If it's bolt on, how many screws are attaching the neck to the body? Are they spread out or are they concentrated together? In my opinion, I found that the 35 inch scale bases offer a superior B string to 34 in most cases. However, there are plenty of 34 inch scale bases that have a fine B string. My Valenti here, GNL bases, Music Man bases all have great B strings. But that being said, 35 inch scale really brings the business with the Bs. The next thing you want to look at for the neck is the nut width and neck profile. Is the neck skinny? Is it chunky? Do you have a wide nut width or a narrow nut width? This will all impact the playability of the bass. This Lakeland here has a 45 millimeter nut width and is extremely comfortable with, I believe it's C-shaped neck profile. Very easy to go up and down the neck. And I think this neck pairs very nicely with the 19 millimeter spacing down at the bridge, making for an awesome playing experience. My MTD back here has a rather large nut width at 47.6 millimeters. My Valenti, on the other hand, is at 43 millimeters, which is almost like a wide four string P bass, but it's a five string. This also has 18 millimeter spacing as opposed to 19. However, it does really all come down to your preference and what you're looking for and what you like. It's very easy to form an opinion through the internet without actually experiencing any of the things that you're forming an opinion about. So I think it's important to get out there and play as many instruments as you can and really figure out what works for you because that's what's most important. Now moving up to the headstock, this is another thing to look out for. Five string basses have an extra tuner as opposed to a four string and that adds weight to the headstock. And depending on how the tuners are configured, this can also add some additional length to the instrument and potentially add some neck dive. So it's important to look at the ergonomics of the headstock and the instrument as a whole and see how it's going to balance. Also look at the type of tuners that are being used. Are they large, heavy, and clunky tuners or small, lightweight tuners? Are they configured five in a line like a really long hockey stick headstock? For example, like a Jackson? Or is it a three by two like this Lakeland here? My Valenti here has a four plus one and this balance is great as well. So there's a whole bunch of different configurations out there and it's important to take all of those things into consideration. Balance can make or break a great instrument. Even if it sounds and plays nicely, if you're constantly battling the neck and gravity, you're not gonna have a good playing experience overall. So there you have it. These are the aspects that I look out for when I'm shopping for a five string bass. I hope you found this video helpful in your journey for selecting a five string bass. If you're here, you're probably looking for a five. And I hope this helps you narrow down your search to what you like. To summarize everything that I've talked about thus far, I think the biggest points to look out for are the bridge and string spacing and the neck profile, as well as the balance and weight of the instrument. These are going to be the biggest factors in making your five string experience enjoyable or just a pain in the back, literally. But let me know what things you look for when you're shopping for a five string bass down in the comments below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video series and uh, how to select a certain style of instrument. And as always, until we groove again.